So this is an early build, it's a pre-alpha. We put all these systems together where... Uh... <laughs> so uh, yeah, so all these systems are together so that you guys can really understand what we're, what we're aiming at doing. It's, uh, I don't know what's going on, all right. So, um, so the, the goal of this particular mission is to go from the underground bunker underneath uh, Washington Park. Don't blow up the bomb. I don't know, I haven't heard anything. Anyway, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so the goal is to go from the underground bunker up to the server room where Sam has to uh, erase uh, all, so all, all information pertaining is ever being there. So, uh, so we're going to start here. This is the new Sam Fisher with the beard, with the, uh, the attitude. And he can still hide under desk. He can still do these little, you know, hiding stuff. He can still take someone and, you know, take care of him quite easily. That's, that's all still in the game. You know, all these things he can still do. We've, uh, we've, Put in, a, put in place a whole new uh, fighting system where, wow, as you can see, it's, it is an early build. So I'm just gonna, you know, whack on. So you can pick up anything in the map. You can uh, throw anything everywhere. Throw it at some guards. Put them on the ground. Got some a whole new way to play. So you can pick up anything. You can if you throw stuff at the, like these cones over there, they're gonna move. They're gonna break. So the whole system is all dynamic. You can really use anything in the in the environment to really improvise and really use everything around you. Right? Okay. So as you can see, Sam can still kick ass. He can still do all these uh, different things that made him like the super spy that he was, right? But now he, d he can't just go around and smack people around. And these, he's, his missions aren't about going into uh, underground bunkers and light and dark shadows. And, uh, right, right now he's in daylight in a Washington park. And, and what he has to do is he, he has to use his environment to be able to to achieve his goals so uh, here's Washington Park 
and there's a lot of guards in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take care of him. This guard over here, he's got a certain uh, patrol area. I'm going to try and get his attention. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring him over. Come here. Come here, little guard. So as you can see, the detection meter here tells me that the guard has spotted me and he's going to follow me until either I take care of him or uh, he doesn't see me for a long period of time. So I'm bringing him somewhere where no one can see us and I'm just going to throw him on the ground right, right there. And I've taken care of him. It's just, just one of the way. I, I, if I want to take care of a guard like that, I have to take him out of public sight. Otherwise, all his friends are going to come and it's going to be... Yeah, yeah, I'm going to show that a little further on in the... No, no, you, it was a good question. It's, uh, that's the whole idea of the thing. So if you want to... If you, if you can just bring a... a <laughs> if you, you can just bring someone to, uh, to you to, to take care of them, that's one thing. But in some cases, like this guard over there, which you're going to see... Uh, well, this guy's not moving, so I can't just bring him to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and create a diversion to make him go to this new place and uh, forget about me for a, and forget that I was even there. So here's this uh, tourist guide. She's talking to all these people about how Washington Park is beautiful and so on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to steal something from her. And she, we've got an ownership system where uh, she knows that something's been stolen from her and she's going to react to it and everyone's going to react and it's going to create a commotion over there. And oh, as you, you can see the guard is already coming. So I'm breaking his stuff. He's, gonna, he's checking out what's going on. So I can just go past him like that. And the guard is behind me. The, uh, you mean the, uh, the, the, the guards? Oh, the tourists, they're just kind of panicking. And I'm, you know, Sam has this ability that he can just go by and go and notice. He's like this, this guy with this hoodie that just, you know, doesn't get noticed that much. So he, he, he took the thing, he dropped it, and like everyone was like, what's going on? And now he's just passed it. Uh, so next next step is going to be to go unnoticed in this this little area so I'm going to use the, gr the crowd a new blend in crowd system where we're uh, following uh, the, the, the civilians and they're noticing me if I stay hooked on them for too long so I can join in in their, in their discussions here and I can hear what they're saying about you know, last night's game or whatever and you know, if I stay there for too long, they're gonna spot me. So I gotta, I gotta go on to the next one. So I can just kind of sail from people to people, a bit like a fro Frogger gameplay or something, where everyone is a safe zone, and whenever I mimic whatever they're doing, I'm I'm safe. I'm basically stealthy. I'm, I'm hidden from people, basically. It, so it's not about light and dark anymore, it's really about being able to go into uh, a certain place where I'm not gonna go, no, I'm not gonna be noticed. So it's about, all about going unnoticed. So here we are at the latest uh, junction of this particular mission where Sam has to go through that door over there. But, you know, there's a guard patrolling, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a panic. I'm gonna act you know, create chaos so everyone uh, goes crazy and the guards could just go over there and see what's going on. So I'm going to pull out my gun and I'm going to shoot this propane tank. So as you can see, the guard just went over there. Everyone's going over there. So I can just go past them without a problem and go into the server room unnoticed. Everyone's panicking. So that's it. That's basically the idea. The idea is to have a, a certain mission and to have a certain goal and to 
and to have all this, this the whole map to work with so you can go at it in a number of different ways you can you can improvise it any way you want you, the only thing is you have to go to that place i could have come from the other side use the crowd use like maybe some other gadgets that i'm going to get from the black market like create some other explosion somewhere else or blow up a car or, or start an alarm system on the car or you know there's a lot of different things that uh, the player is going to be able to do and we're going to teach him all these different tricks and they're not the same tricks as an agent they're, they're the tricks of a, of a fugitive so this is uh, this is what we're uh, we're super excited about we're gonna this is coming out in the and uh, Chris for Christmas this year so uh, it should be super super cool and uh, yeah if you have any questions uh, Uh, well, basically, that's the idea. The idea is that we have uh, we have three different functions for anything. We have uh, a stealth button, stealthier button. We have a normal action, and we have a, an aggressive action. So for every object, whenever you think I'm going to do an aggressive action with this object, I'm you're going to press like this red button. Or if you want to pick up the object and do a normal action, it's the A button. If you want to do a stealthy action and it's the X button. So that's the, the whole idea, the whole concept behind like the three buttons. Uh, there's probably going to be some more buttons that we're going to add to, for some specific things along the way. But the idea is to really focus on these three buttons to make it easy. Just a few and then you add it all in as you actually get further into the That's the idea. So I'm, I'm just going to continue a little bit here, show you this little, you know, this cafe in here is, is on the other side of the server room. So I'm going to just go and break everything in that little cafe over there and we're just going to tear everything apart. It's going to be fun. Anyways, as I was saying, it is an early build, so... Spread out! Turn this place upside down. A bunch of feds are missing, and if they're dead, this would be the perfect place to stick them. What is it? It's a bunker, and uh, you can realize that, uh, you know, uh, in, the in the previous Splinter Cell, when you were detected just such ways, that was roughly uh, the end of the gameplay. Now it's the beginning, because you can, you can fight, as you've seen. You can pick up any object and, and throw it and use it, you know, as a weapon, uh, which is very cool, actually. And it just makes you improvise through uh, the environment. Whatever's around him. There you go. So uh, it, the controls are very simple. It's a sort of a sports game philosophy with a three-button uh, simple controls that you can improve through uh, through the gameplay. We're gonna move to the next scene uh, where it introduces it introduces our uh, you know for the first time the crowd. So uh, as you can notice, Sam has changed a lot. Sam is gonna wear a hoodie in order to, you know, hide properly in the crowd because uh, if the guards are recognizing his face, then they go, they'll He's go after trouble. him. Mm -hmm. There you go. So um, what Daniel is trying to do, there's an important Sorry. information uh, Sam needs oh, to no. find in the, in the back house of a cafe, in the, in, the, in, in the back office of the cafe. And um, in order to get there, he needs to avoid all the guards. Some of the classic stuff we've seen in the previous Splinter Cell, but with a brand new type of interactions. So, whoops, here's the guard seems to have discovered, you know, that, you know, there's... He there's saw his face. Yeah, it's suspicious. So he's following Sam slowly, and but Daniel is smart, and he brings uh, brings well, him in a place where... Uh, wow, well done, Daniel. There you go. Well played. 
So it's been on the very serious about this. Yeah, well, this kind of action done through the crowd would have made everybody scream, and you know, so the reaction would have been much right. different. So it's smart to to do it this way. What are those statues? Uh, th- those are statues in a in a, in a Washington park. This p- mm-hmm. this part of the game takes place in Washington. Okay. Um, so Sam needs to move forward and uh, go to to the cafe, uh, but. Um, there, uh, there seems to be a, a guard, you know, uh, on uh, on the top uh, left of the screen, watching, you know, th- this zone. So you need to create diversion. Diversion is key to this game. You need to, like here, you, Daniel has been stealing a cell phone, so now the crowd is reacting. Uh, the policeman is moving to t- uh, to investigate about what's happening, and the crowd is snitching Sam. So there's pointing, you know, that is, where's the guy who's been. Um, who's been stealing the cell phone. And this is a great opportunity because Sam can now pass by the area he wanted to go and move forward in, in the action. So you can, you can recognize that uh, in terms of a uh, uh, look of Sam. Uh, Sam is wearing very few things on him. He has a bag so he can put a little bit of uh, accessories and gadgets you, you will find in the black market. Um, he's wearing his hoodie when he's trying to blend in, in, in crowds in such, a, such ways. So by moving forward, uh, once again, we're trying to reach this vital information because Sam, you know, he, 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 he needs to prove his innocence. So by, by moving forward uh, and because... And be, because the, the, the cafe is full of guard, uh, we're going to create a bigger... Di- diversion, you know, and there are many ways of doing it. I don't know which one uh, Daniel will will pick up. Okay, so he decides to shoot on this, uh, you know, propane tank, making an explosion. So all the guards are running, you know, through the, the area and, and, and react to what's going on. While now Sam can go in in the back office of the cafe and and get the information he needs. Um, we were talking about uh, dynamic environment. Picking up objects. Now, that's the kind of thing you still can you can do with the game, is to uh, move object and barricade yourself. Who who plays these games? Kids, uh, young boys, adolescents, uh, adults. It's, well, it's mostly adults, I would say, uh, in terms of uh, of genre. Um, and uh, yeah, well, we've we've been spending a lot of time uh, to manage this dynamic environment because in a first person game, it's easy to pick up things and throw it away, right, but in right. a third person. We spent six months matching the ends properly uh, on the objects you're picking. So mm-hmm. it was a, a huge challenge. So, uh, you know, this is the rough overlay all elements we wanted to, 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 to show you today. Uh, we'll invite you tomorrow to, uh, to come to the booth and uh, have a, you know... So everybody can play? Well, no, it's not <laughs> playable, but, uh, you know, we're going to play for you. And uh, so you guys can see a little more of what we've, uh, we've shown uh, today. You're, you'll be in trouble, Daniel, now. Ce qu'on a à voir, c'est le nouveau Splinter Cell Conviction, où ce que maintenant, Sam est un fugitif. Il doit utiliser les moyens du bord, comme on dit. Donc, il doit utiliser, comme ici, en dessous du bureau, pour se dissimuler, se cacher. Là, je peux utiliser une stratégie un petit peu plus stealth de l'étouffer, de policier ici. Mais là, vu que mon environnement est totalement interactif, je peux utiliser... Tous les, mo- tous les moyens qui sont à ma disposition pour euh, me défaire de mes ennemis, de, de ceux qui me pourchassent. Donc là, ici, on va utiliser le bureau et les étagères. Si je me rends ici, je vais prendre des cubes. Et avec les cubes, je vais pouvoir les lancer. Et là, utiliser le container ici. Et voilà. Tout le monde est inconscient. Voler un walkie-talkie pour suivre les conversations des policiers pour savoir quel est l'état de Sam Fesha en ce moment, s'il est très poursuivi ou peu poursuivi. Ce qui est vraiment plaisant, c'est avoir un, un environnement interactif où ce que tous les objets qui sont dans le jeu, je peux les prendre entre mes mains et euh, faire euh, ce que je veux avec, les utiliser comme armes ou les placer pour me faire des, 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 des barricades pour euh, réussir à atteindre mes objectifs sans être dérangé. Puis, ce qui est vraiment plaisant, c'est avoir un, un système de poignée, de handle, si on veut en anglais, où ce que Sam positionne ses mains sur un objet, peu importe dans la position dans laquelle il est. Fait, 
peu importe comment, que l'objet se trouve à terre, Sam va le prendre, puis l'engin ne portera pas attention. Puis ça n'enlèvera pas de, de frame rate au jeu, ça ne diminuera pas le, le, la qualité de jeu. On a différents types d'animations aussi où ce que Sam il peut courir, en, il est pourchassé, disons, par un policier, il court, ramasse la, une chaise et l'utilise comme une arme, tout dans une seule animation, fait comme ça, ça ne lag jamais. Là, ici, on a différents types d'intelligence artificielle, fait il faut que je fasse attention. Comme si ici, je joins un groupe de femmes, un homme barbu, ça risque de pas trop... Euh... Là, ici, j'attire l'attention, justement. Comme, qu'est-ce que vous faites ici, monsieur? Vous n'êtes pas notre ami, s'il vous plaît. Il est continué votre chemin. Là, hop, j'ai le policier ici qui a eu un aperçu de mon visage, parce que présentement, je suis dans deux tiers du jeu, dans l'histoire, où ce que ça m'est hautement recherché. Puis là, j'attire le policier loin de la foule, parce que je veux pas que la foule... Me, me dénonce. Si, disons, je suis en train de battre un policier en plein milieu d'une foule, je risque de, 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 causer pas mal de, de me causer pas mal de troubles plus que d'autres choses. Fait que si je vais m'attaquer au policier un peu à la retirer, et voilà. Donc là, je vais pouvoir vaguer à mes occupations de façon plus, plus calme et posée pour aller voir l'autre policier qui est ici au loin, mais que lui ne semble pas vouloir patrouiller. Il va falloir que je me trouve une autre euh, façon de créer une diversion puis de l'amener euh, plus proche de moi pour que je puisse le contourner. Donc là, on est ici. Oups, désolé, monsieur, je suis dans votre chemin. Et ici, on a des gens qui assistent à une comme de conférence. Fait que si j'arrive ici et je lui vole peut-être son téléphone ou le laptop, tout simplement, je vais prendre le laptop. Oh, le policier. Ouais, justement, les gens sont un petit peu en état de panique, crie un peu, parce que là, en ce moment, pourquoi, monsieur, vous avez volé notre, notre laptop, tout ça? Le policier va, va voir ce qui se passe. Il n'est plus à sa position. Moi, je peux tout facilement, comme ça, passer plus proche du café et à mon objectif. Sauf que là, il faut que je fasse attention, comme j'ai dit, vu qu'il y a plusieurs gens qui recherchent Sam, oh, comme ici, un policier, je trouve une façon de le contourner sans trop attirer le son regard. Là, ici, on va le contourner. Oh, là, je pense qu'il va vouloir me... Ça, me suit. Fait que là, je vais utiliser la foule un peu comme euh, cachette. Je vais, le je vais me fondre dans la foule, je vais réussir à perdre son, son attention. Oh, on a un autre policier ici. Il va falloir que je me trouve une façon de créer une, une diversion pour les... pour que je puisse... Oh! Là, c'est un dispatch, fait que là, je risque d'avoir oh, des policiers qui s'en viennent à moi. Mais si je les attaque en arrière du café, je ne devrais pas trop avoir la foule dans mon chemin. Comme vous voyez, tous les objets sont interactifs. There you go. Là. Oh. Là, je vais me créer une diversion rapidement pour, euh, en cas que les autres policiers arrivent. Attention, madame, ça va péter. Et je fais exploser la, le gaz de propane. Ça me crée une diversion. Là, je vais pouvoir accéder au café. En arrière, dans le server room. Je rouvre la porte. Sauf que là, pour pas que les autres policiers euh, me dérangent, je vais me faire une barricade. Renforcer ma barricade avec d'autres objets. Et voilà. Sauf qu'il faut que je fasse attention parce que tout dépendant des objets, il y a différents objets. On, différents degrés de tolérance, puis une, une imprimante, c'est pas très solide, donc je fasse attention. Parce que là, je vais, je vais me placer ici, déliter mes, mes dossiers, comme ça, je serai pas retracé. Oh. Prendre la chaise, tasser du chemin, va tout simplement passer au travers de la vitre. Là, c'est ce qui est vraiment plaisant, c'est d'avoir un environnement dynamique où ce que tout peut bouger, tout peut être renversé. Il faut que je fasse attention parce que le plus que je crée de panique et que je peux, je peux faire bouger des objets, bien, je peux alerter les, les, les gens. Les gens finissent par alerter les policiers et me rendre les choses plus difficiles. Mais il n'y a pas de mauvaise stratégie. Si je veux être agressif, je peux être agressif. Si ça me tente d'être passif, je peux être passif. Et voilà. Là, par exemple, les gens, c'est ça, les gens ne veulent pas approcher le café parce qu'il y a un fou furieux dans le café qui est en train de créer le bordel. Par exemple, j'ai peut-être des policiers 
Oh, justement, un policier ici. Et voilà. Allez, mon vieux. T'en veux un autre? Et, okay. Et voilà. Previous games, um, the, well, on, on Chaos Theory and, and others, there was the game were either developed in, in Shanghai, uh, in France for the multiplayer, or in Montreal. Now this time around, uh, it's all done in Montreal, and, and um, it's, it also allows us to, to, to work from uh, the exact same engine and mechanics to, uh, to make the multiplayer experience much more, much more closely uh, linked to the, the solo experience. So in terms of learning curve, the player, once you learn uh, either the multiplayer or the solo, he, he'll be able to, to move forward easily with the, 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 the same controls and the same mechanics. With Conviction, we wanted to change uh, the core mechanics and, um, and make it um, a, a clear link and a clear support to the thematic we're now dealing with in, into the game, which is a, a fugitive. When you're a fugitive means that uh, the reading of the environment is, is kind of similar to what the player has learned in the previous cleaner cell, uh, because he needs to look at things and detect what could be useful for him. Um, so this relation with um, between the player and the environment is kind of similar to what we've done in the past, except that now, uh, as a fugitive, you need to act much quicker. You, need, you know, there are people are chasing for you. You need to, 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 to react now and to, to, to use the environment more quickly. So uh, somehow, um, previously, player needed to be a bit um, uh, patient. He needed to, to stay in the dark and watch and make his own, his own strategy. Now he needs to find new ways to hide as a fugitive in a daylight situation and, um, and, and we've created a whole dynamic environment so the player can pick anything in the environment, can move object, it can hide behind things, he can, can you know, use the environment to, to, to move forward in his mission. And this is a, that was the key to us of a fugitive experience, being able to, to do anything you want in the environment and, and, and interact with mostly anything that is visible in the, in the environment as a tool, as, an, as a weapon or as a defense uh, object, a defensive object, that was very important to us because uh, then when comes the time to, 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 uh, to translate this uh, tactical experience into quick actions, um, it's pure improvisation. In the previous Splinter Cell, uh, because you were looking for lights and shadows, you know, as safe zones for you to hide, um, you could interact with lights, but those safe zones were remaining kind of static so you could pr predict where you could move and make your own tactics about navigation in the environment. Now uh, we're, trans we're moving that into what we call active stealth because all those static points that we had in previous game are now moving. Just think about the crowd which is a good example. Uh, if you can um, just following a little group of, of people and feel that you can blend into it and to avoid uh, guards that are looking for you. It's one way to, 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 to be in a safe zone that is moving, that is active. Uh, there's many other ways to, to, to hide in the environment. Um, so we, we strongly feel that uh, in terms of realism, this game is, uh, is a progression because it, it refers to uh, environments that are to everyday's environments, so you know, public areas, uh, civilian context. So. Um, and it's because these are more uh, familiar with most of the gamer, I think people will learn to develop skills to read the environment more easily and that, that will make a, a difference as well in, in, at the end.